Welcome to episode 18 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. In this episode, our electrician on a mission, David Stocken, sticks to the facts while answering the question, when did the IEC start requiring ground rods? Fill us in, David. Yeah, that's a great question. In fact, uh, some people are quite shocked to learn that uh, the uh, IEC, the European standards, didn't start requiring ground rods at homes until 2018. Um, and, and for those of you out here in America that have been struggling and fighting to achieve 10 ohms to ground or 25 ohms and, and your jaws may be on the ground hearing that, the, and it's absolutely true. Uh, the IEC, and, and for the most part, and there may be some exceptions in certain countries, did not require ground rods to be, or earth rods they call them, to be installed at homes until the 2018 uh, time frame, depending on what country uh, you're based out of. But in particular, uh, England, the BS7671 did not require it until 2018. Now, there's some exceptions to that. You'd have to understand how the IEC codes are based. Um, they have different electrical systems. The TT systems have always required a ground rod. That won't mean a lot to Americans, uh, Americans here. This is a, an electrical system that's actually illegal in uh, America and uh, would be its own podcast all on its own, uh, its own uh, video to explain that to you, what, why it's illegal here, why it was allowed there, etc. But uh, for the most part, the, they have very similar systems to what we have here in America where you have a transformer where the center tap of that transformer is grounded, tied to a ground rod, just like we do here. And then it comes over to our homes and they have a neutral to ground bond in the main electrical panel and they split off into a neutral and a ground system. Uh, in Europe, they call it a protective earth or the PE. And they had no requirement to actually install a ground rod at the home panel until 2018. And the reason for this is actually true here in America. To clear your electrical faults, you don't need that ground rod. In fact, uh, by our own code in Article 250.4, uh, we are not allowed to use the earth as a conductor as part of the fault current path. So when a, uh, your kids accidentally stick a fork in the uh, 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 outlet and you get a, sh you know, the f breaker trips, what's happening is that's a, uh, that fault hits the ground wire in your outlet, goes all the way back to your main panel on the ground wire or protective earth, through the neutral ground bond, up through the neutral, back to the transformer hanging on the pole, through the winding, back down the hot wire into your box, it causes a trip of the breaker because it causes a massive increase in current to occur for a very short time frame, tripping that breaker. At no point did you need your ground rod to do that or your earth rod to do that. And that's why in the European codes, they did not have a requirement for a earth rod or ground rod at homes except in certain situations. Uh, now they have changed that uh, today and they've increased it and there were some reasons why they did this. Uh, many of the reasons why is it has to do a lot with the operation of circuit uh, surge protection devices. So the clamping voltages of a surge protection device are better the closer that earth connection is. It also helped to balance the voltage differentials between the transformers which can be located quite some distance away and your uh, uh, your home. It also, when the high side of that transformer faults, it helps to make sure that that fault is cleared back to the utility company's circuit breakers. So if the high side of your incoming feed transformer out on the utility pole faults, it's going to utilize part of your uh, grounding electrode system in order to clear its fault back to the utility company. Also, things like lightning strikes and uh, uh, 
uh, objectionable, other objectionable currents, harmonics and electrical noise and all these other things that happen in solid state switching devices in our modern electronics, we're really having a hard time all grounding back to one source, uh, all the way back to the utility company's uh, single ground rod that all of your neighbors are tied to. Uh, so they found they were really having a lot of problems with electronic systems and uh, ground plane noise was getting higher and they just really needed to ultimately found they had to improve their um, grounding systems and they came back and uh, decided to start installing ground rods at every first service disconnect panel at the main service panels just like we do here. Now what has not caught up in the IEC is what we do in, our, in the National Electrical Code is we have quite a few rules uh, involving those electrodes which they do not have yet you know we have rules about lengths and how far apart they have to be and having backup electrodes and below uh, permanent frost line, you know, below uh, permanent moisture levels and all kinds of rules that have been acquired over experience from decades and decades and decades of requiring ground rods. You know, you may use uh, your footings as an electrodes, but you may not use uh, 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 your upper grade building steel, you can, you know, if you have a foundational barrier, a water vapor barrier on your footings, you can't use it. Uh, you can't use your swimming pool as a grounding electrode. We have all these rules we've learned. Uh, many, some of those are incorporated, but many of them are not yet incorporated in the IEC. Uh, no doubt in future editions and probably very quickly we'll start seeing amendments to uh, these ICs that will come out start implementing very similar rules that we currently have here in the NEC. Um, that's why we often see a lot of uh, questions about the installation of grounding electrodes uh, from the our European neighbors these days because they really just don't have the uh, a, a lot of the uh, experience yet in installing those ground rods except at certain conditions. So um, yeah, it's absolutely true. Ground rods were not required at homes until 2018. Sounds like a, a big shock to us here in America because we're so used to it. It's such a common thing. We're trying to hit 25 ohms resistance to ground and all these other things that we've talked about in other podcasts. Some of them, as you know, uh, I agree with. Some of the requirements I don't necessarily agree with so much. Uh, but yeah, Europe did not uh, in large part require ground rods, and they do today. And uh, if uh, uh, you guys in Europe have any questions about how to install them, of course, feel free to uh, send us an email, give us a ring. Uh, we hope you guys like these videos and podcasts, depending on how you're uh, watching or listening to us. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, there's a subscribe button. That make sure you don't miss any of the upcoming uh, videos. There's a like there. We'd appreciate it if you'd uh, click that like. Leave us a comment. We really enjoy those. We try to read them and answer them. Uh, feel free to send us an email to our website. If you're on uh, listening to us on one of the podcasts, and we've got quite a few people who do, uh, make sure you subscribe um, to the podcast so you don't miss any upcoming uh, releases and uh, give us a rating. Those ratings really do help us and help everybody out a lot to promote the podcast even further and get some good information out to everyone. And again, feel free to contact us anytime via our website at uh, www.esgrounding.com and uh, please send us some suggestions for future podcasts and videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you'd like to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. See you next time.